is a format. Thanks. Um, is that okay as a format this time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you want to edit it, or I, I'm happy to, to do that also. Either way. Yeah, you just mean like in GitHub. Yeah, in GitHub directly. Uh, and is this you integrated the changes that we made on top of yours? Yes. I didn't merge it, but I went through and copied them one by one. Awesome. So let's. Um, can you make the window a little bit taller so we can see more? I wish then... it was a little bit taller. <laughs> Is that um, better? I didn't want to make it too tall. Perfect. OK, so um, let's just start at the top. At, at, go down to this group here. And um, as soon as somebody gets to something, or well, I'll, I'll, I'll speak aloud what's there, and then make sure everybody has agrees that it's the thing we want. And if any questions come up, we can talk about them. Um, if anybody has any reservations about anything at all, speak up immediately and be very forceful about it, <laughs> that makes sense. So we can make sure that um, we're all, we all have consensus. Um, so starting on 14, proposal for a new type of build pack that runs against the stack in order to extend it with, in ways that are only possible by running pri privileged commands. Good. Uh, normally build packs do not run as root. Intentional design decision ensures that operations rebase and works like day two, that makes sense. However, applications require modification to the stack they run on. And system packages, CA certs, this is a mechanism stack authors, build pack authors, build pack users, leverage to extend their stacks. Does that seem accurate? Yes. Cool. Um, be helpful, everybody, if you get thumbs up so I can see just so all on the same page. Uh, root build pack. Um, do we want to keep the concept of a root build pack in here? I am okay with it and not opposed to it. Um, it's come up a few times. Um, Javier, thumbs down. What's up? You're muted. You're muted. Your headset's also down. Too, too many buttons. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it just adds to the complication of this particular RFC if there's no real other mention or value to it. Um, but again, not strongly against it. It just feels like it's clutter. Um, I think for this, if you're not, if you're okay with something going into it, and you wouldn't like to propose an alternative that adds something, you know, just we should we should keep going through it. Um, uh, it's not, yeah, I, I can remove it. It's not used. Yeah, because we we talk about it as an alternative, and I think that's what makes it confusing, right? It seems like everybody would approve it if it has root build pack or if it doesn't have root build pack. Is that correct? <laughs> Definitely not going to stop me from improving it. We might as well take it out to keep things simple, though, right? Yeah, I'm fine with that. It makes sense. Cool. And then you um, just have to edit that warning. Yeah, type of build pack. Perfect. OK, stack build packs, type of build pack that runs against the stack image mm -hmm. uh, instead of an app. Stack build packs may make changes to build and run images that either violate compatibility guarantees or violate the contract determined by the stack author. A user space build pack is a traditional build pack. It doesn't run as root. Launch image is final image. All good. Stack build pack, a type of build pack that runs as root against the stack image. Now that we've taken out type of root build pack. With root privileges, maybe? Sounds great. Oh, God. Is that right? With an E. That's right, I think. That's with an E. Literally the hardest part of this RFC. Um, the, the word launch image there, that refers to the final application image. Is that right? Yeah, I think um, I had to introduce that here because, uh, because words are hard. I think that's probably something we should promote into the spec as a... The spec uh, is a competing term of oh. image. Oh, that's probably... I was probably trying to avoid that at some point. I can switch launch image to app image here if we want. Let's go with that image because in the spec. Not the kind of thing I would have pointed out, but since we're going through word by word. I've heard I've heard people use launch image to mean run image also, which is yeah, that, that's <laughs> very true. similar. Um, but I, I agree app image is too specific, but I think just to match the terminology, we should change it later <laughs> in the spec if that makes sense. Um, is app image official in the spec of what it's called? Yes.
I got them all. Cool. So I think we're a little further up. I'm oh, sorry, good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting for us to rename launch equals true to app equals true at some point, just to make it really consistent and also consistent. <laughs> I thought we didn't like the name app. Isn't that a thing? We no, I like it. it, but I don't. I haven't heard any other word that we like better. For the same I really situation. don't like launch image either. Like That's launch. Just, yeah. In for clarity, app image is very clear what you're talking about in the end. For now. We can change it in the spec later. Yeah. Um, for, okay, a new type of build pack called a stack pack uh, may run against a stack in order to extend it in ways that are only possible by running privilege commands. Unlike user space build packs, a stack build pack can modify any path in the file system. User space build packs can can only uh, create modified disjoint layers, blah, 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 which makes possible features like individual layer reuse uh, as independent or ordering. Um, is any path okay there? Uh, so we'd be comfortable with that given that we mentioned exceptions mm -hmm. to that path below. Almost path outside of the workspace directory. Yeah, it's still There's a whole work. list of exceptions you say. Any path and parentheses, excluding the exceptions below. <laughs> uh, can you just say most paths or something? Uh, with exceptions. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, User space build pack can only create modified disjoint layers. Blah, blah. A stack pack may also define a list of mixins uh, that it can provide uh, to the stack or indicate that it can provide any mixins. In this way, a stack uh, that is missing a mixin required by a build pack may have that mixin provided by a stack build pack. Does that seem accurate to everybody? The mixins come uh, are specified in build pack toml statically, and we'll get to that below. Um, a stack provider may choose to include stack packs with uh, the stack they distribute. If the stack includes that file and associated stack packs, then the following will occur. Um, platform may compare the list of mixins that are statically required by all build packs in the stack section of the build pack toml file um, with the static list of mixins provided by the stack packs in the stack section of their build pack toml and fail if the build chooses to do so. So this means that um, this first thing is the current thing we have in build pack toml that specifies the mixins that you need on the stack in order to run. And the second thing is a new list of uh, mixins in a separate part of build pack toml that's static that specifies what those stack packs can provide. Is that right? Everybody have that understanding, it's statically provided. Um, and uh, that, one, that one can have a uh, asterisk in it, be any. Uh, during the detect phase, lifecycle will compare the list of required mixins, the list of mixins provided by the stack and stack build packs in accordance with state specific mixin rules. Um, if any mixins are not provided, the build will fail. To accomplish this, list of runtime built-in mixins that are present in the run image and build image must be provided by the detector. So what does this mean? Um, Yeah, this is the part that isn't yet implemented, so it's probably still a bit fuzzy to to most. But yeah, I think the detector now has to take in. We didn't really specify the format here, but it's going to have to take in runtime and build time mixins. I guess build time mixins are already present, so maybe that's written kind of kind of yeah, weirdly. But yeah, they the, aren't to the detector, right? Because they're on a label on the image, but the detector's inside the image. Is this the was, stack toml not in there? The stack toml is in there, but. Okay. We haven't specified, unless it's been added to this PR, um, how mixins would be described in the stack toml yet. Yeah, and I don't even think we went as far as saying how the mixins are going to be given to detector. So at at this point, that's kind of at one point I was thinking that I guess. that could be an entirely ah, uh, sometimes it's a totally standalone thing that I think could be an RFC on its own because right now. The lifecycle doesn't validate mixins 
for the build operation, right? But it very well could. Yeah, it's all done by pack, right? Yeah, which is kind of bad. I feel like pack should do it up front, but the lifecycle should do it again, you know, client side and server side validation. Um, would you change, do you believe anything in that phrase is wrong? And do we need the extra detail of how those lower level interactions happen? I think eventually we need the detail. That detail is going to need to be in the spec, right? Um, Maybe not in the RFC. It'd be helpful to have it in the RFC, but I believe that we can sort it out and I'm okay admitting it. Sounds good. Um, so the next thing is the life cycle will run the detect phase for all stack packs defined in order toml and the stack order toml, and then for all user space build packs defined in order toml. Does that make sense to everybody? Stack packs run first, have a separate order definition, and then the order definition for normal build packs runs. We need to talk about how, because I think it's not just two separate orders, right? It's like the stack order is inserted into the beginning of every Yeah, I think that's regular group. a little bit lower. Um, in, in yeah, I don't think that needs. To, yeah, I was gonna say that, that feels wrong here. That's more implementation. Um, maybe this needs to be a little more vague, actually, because this suggests an implementation that is maybe not accurate. It's like the life cycle will run the detect phase for all still stable effects defined in order toml and C and B yeah, order toml, yeah. such yeah. such that you know as if they were one order toml together or whatever. Yeah. Like An that. order will be synthesized from the two order tunnels. <laughs> yeah, that's even better. Merge and run? Or do you want to do yes. the synthesized thing? Perfect. That looks great right now. Um, during the build phase, potentially in parallel to the extend phase, uh, the lifecycle will execute the stack build pack build phase uh, for all passing stack packs as root. Lifecycle will um, drop privileges and continue to run the build phase as normal, running user to build packs, and then separately in the extend phase in parallel to that, this is for the run image, the runtime stack packs run in a separate container against the run images. This all makes sense to everybody. Detect happens, forks off two containers, running in build, running in run. Uh, you know, the same build packs presumably have to be present on the run image as the build image, because the detect is going to only run in the build image versions of those things. Good to move on. Cool. Uh, how it works, stack pack is a special case of build packs that has the following properties. We agree that they run as root that uh, you use the privilege true flag in order to mark a build pack as a stack build pack. Do we yeah. need that? I question that at some point. I, I kind of wonder like if we have our own order toml for stack build packs that is kind of set by the stack, do we need to have this flag? The order toml. You, yeah, it sort of implies you can have an unprivileged stack build pack as well, which is the part I don't really like. I know at one point we talked about changing this from privilege true to like mode stack or stack true or something that's less about whether it was privileged and more about whether it was a stack pack. I think this is an artifact because this was split off from root build packs, right? It is. It's not because of the, the stack order toml, the one that's described here. We do not need it. However, I feel it is easier to remove it later and ignore it than it is to add it in later and require it, which would potentially break existing stack packs. Um, stack packs have different behavior than normal build packs. And so to me, this serves as a validation that the build pack you're talking about is in fact a stack pack because otherwise the interface mm -hmm. is so similar and there's no other way to change it. I have no opinions on what the name of that validation is, but does anybody think, A, we should not have a validation like this in build pack toml for the RFC? Does anybody think that this val this key needs to be different in order to allow the RFC to pass? Then I think we're good. <laughs> um, next thing is, uh, 
can only create one layer per image, uh, both a layer for build packs to build on top of and a layer for the app image. Um, everybody agrees stack packs generate one layer that can go into the final image. You can exclude cuts of that, right? But they're, they're cached and recovered only during the build process. And so uh, we're talking maybe one layer per app image would cl clarify that a little bit. So there's no such feature as like uh, the app slices, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I will say per app image helps the pedantic part of my brain because we call cached layers layers and therefore it technically can make two layers. Um, it does have in parentheses where it's both a build pack both a layer for the build packs to build on top of and a layer for the app image. Maybe that's not clarifying enough, actually. Both a layer for the build Because in the build case, it actually does build a layer for well, that's build. Th then I think it has three layers, right? Or four, because you could have two cache layers for each of those cases as well. We change it to one snapshot layer or something like that? So in my head, this on the build image, we generate one layer, or we're not going to support building on top of the previous layer. So in the build case, do we actually generate a layer off of that at all anymore? Maybe we don't. No, so not yet. We, we're supporting excludes, which creates a entry in the cache, right? We all historically have always referred to such things in the cache as cached layers. So it's not an exported layer or a build layer, but we we call it a cached layer in the spec. In your head, is that that actually just one layer for all the excludes together? In my head, it was actually a separate layer for each exclude. Uh, I don't either one of those. Like, we can make it one cached layer per exclude or a single cached layer. I don't care about that, but in it's it's. This is saying it isn't a layer, but that has always confused me. But I think this is actually not a layer. That's yeah. just stuff on the file system. So maybe we say, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Uh, at some point we talked about after all stack packs are run, we have to clean up stuff. And so part of that might come into this, like if you're gonna have to define what, what needs to get cleaned up before you run normal user build packs. Yeah, I think that, part is analogous to if a regular build pack created a build true launch false cache false layer. We call that a build layer, even though it's just stuff on a file system that never gets packaged up. Maybe this, instead of worrying about all the details of the different yeah. layers, which are probably covered later, we say can only create one, get rid of the thing in parentheses and say can only create one layer that ends up in the app image. And that's, that's what that's intended to communicate. That is exported. In the X app image? Yeah, into the app image, yeah. And then kill the thing in parentheses afterwards, because that seems to be confusing. Everybody like that and agree with that phrasing? Awesome. Uh, may include in the created layer modifications to any part of the file system, excluding app, layers, platform, and CMB directories. What about temp? What about the other? Yeah, this is incomplete. Uh, yeah, I have the and... complete one somewhere, I think. Yeah. Uh -oh. and, it, and it changes based on OS as well, right? Like, the, like some of these in OS specific, you know, whiteout layers or directories or something. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Could you maybe just link it to the completed list so that there's no right. ambiguity? I think there'll always be a it's bit not, of ambiguity weird. just because like the way Canico works is based on whatever you're running on. I think it sort of figures out which directories to exclude. Um, so, but I don't know, maybe maybe we can be more strict than that. Uh, but how about ex sure I have this spelled out somewhere explicitly. We say excluding app layers, platform, and CMB directories, as well as other directories mentioned below. And then we can go back later and add a link. And you can kill the but not limited too. That way, Javier is pointing to that, but we'll, we don't have to go figure out how to make a link in the market. Yep, right I have the like canonical list in the spec, changes awesome. down at the bottom. Um, 
must not access the application source during the build phase. Does everybody agree that during the detect phase, it's read-only access to the application source? During the build phase on the build image, there is no access. During the build phase on the run image, the application is not there. Everybody aligned on that idea? They should, because there's nothing we can do to stop them on the build image. This is a requirement for the build pack, must not to the build pack author. It's not okay. that the build, the build pack, yeah. it's, it's not a should for the build pack author, it's a must for the build pack author, if that makes sense. Yep. Um, but, but you can put that in there more explicitly. Uh, build packs must not access the application source code. Or it says a stack build pack is a special case. So no, actually, I think it's okay. Cool. Um, it is. It is run before all regular build packs. Do we agree that that's true? It is run against both the build and the run images. I'll agree that that's true. It is distributed with the stack run or and or build image. Do we run it against both images always? Or do we use the results uh, of the detect to decide? It may run, I think. Uh, how about we say it must um, must run before all regular bitplex or whatever um, if if it passes detection. Should we use the same terminology, uh, user space bitplex instead of regular? Yep. Thank you. Um, must run against both the build and the run image if it passes detection, et cetera. And it's, it's even more than if it passes detection for that image type, right? Because you can have a stack back that only is build, right? And it would not run against the, the run, the app image. There's only one detect though. Right, but it, but it can still produce a plan for both the build and the run, right? If the extra mixing that's required is like build colon my package that we Got wouldn't it. want to run against the run image. Uh, if it, so, in that case, if it, oh yeah, yeah, but passes detection includes the provisioning, and so that that makes sense. Okay, cool. cool. Um, must okay is distributed with check. Uh, may not create layers. It says could be maybe distributed with the stack. I think we have a section on how these yeah. get distributed later on. So like, uh, just not to enforce that. And a stack can have zero built stack packs. So. Can it be missing off of the run image or build image, or must it be in both? Wait, for, I'm back on this one. Actually, you can't distribute them any other way. So maybe it should not be me. Must uh, be you just... could distribute them in like K pack or something, right? That doesn't really have the concept of. Mm, no, because it'd have to be put into the stack before. Yep. Agree. If if KPAC injects stack packs, it will inject them in the context of building a new stack image, as opposed to um, creating a builder. Uh, must be distributed to the stack. Now, must it be in both images, or could it be missing from one of them? Yeah, it could be build only, or something like that. If it's a static list of provided mixins that all started with build colon. Uh, this is this is just the distribution. Yeah. It's like, can, think... can you? Go ahead. Sorry. I think you should be allowed to only have it on the build or run image if the set of things, mixins it provides are all phase specific. Detection happens on build, so it has to be on the build image, right? Yeah, it but in that case- Optionally it, on the run, yeah. Have to be on the run image? I mean, it's a bit of an edge case. Well, let's say it must be distributed with the stack build image and may be distributed with the stack run image. Try not to make arguments, just get to consensus and then we can <laughs> argue on it later. Or if it, seem, if it seem like I'm supporting a perspective, I'm not. <laughs> if it seems like I care about each of these details, I would approve it without a lot of these changes, but you're asking about each line. So <laughs> that makes sense. But definitely, again, as a reminder, focus focus on things that would cause you not to approve the RFC to go through um, or, you know, if you're not, um, at least say that it's non-blocking, if that makes sense, and we can call it out. Um, may not create yeah. layers. Sorry, go ahead. We have a long way to go, so. Yeah, how, how far are we? Uh, not very far. Okay, we'll pick it up. Um, where, where are we, the stack pack interface at the top? Yeah. 
Okay. How about everybody read to the order to line 84 uh, and then thumbs up when you're finished. And um, then I'll bl briefly describe what I think it says. Maybe this will be faster. Everybody read to the uh, read thumbs up. Javier. Cool. So um, to summarize this, stack packs look exactly like real build packs. The only difference is slash instead of app directory. Um, we use snapshotting, uh, which is using Conico to generate a layer and the build image, the run image. Um, uh, all the changes will be captured in one layer that ends up in the app image. and. Um, here's again where we have a problem. Maybe all the one layer that ends up in the build image is maybe not exactly correct due to the item potency change on 74. Do we say in the build image? Image? one for sorry. or the build? Say during the build phase. What's that snapshot that's stored in the layers directory in the build phase? Because yeah, now there is no snapshot for the build phase, right? Currently. Because we're not yeah. applying build time cache to that layer yet. In that case, do we need a separate directory? Uh, I think we should future proof that because we know it's going to come. You need it because it's going to run in parallel. Um, another thing is going to the layers directory. On line 67. I'd like to delete that bullet point because detect is never allowed to write to the app and calling it out feels confusing. It does say above, similar to the build pack interface. Cool. Um, Did I miss the part about the extent phase and how that's described? We did describe it earlier. I don't know if the word extend was used. I was kind of thinking the same. Or yeah, it is. I think this is probably the first phase. appearance of Answer. extend. Extend is the phase where it's modifying the run images root in parallel to modifying the build images root during the build phase. Yeah, I, I do think it's worth adding a definition. I like that. Sound okay? All good. Let's go back down and keep going. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. Up Whoa. higher. Stop there. Yeah. Um, the there's a problem here about the layers still, right? Where we say on seventy four, uh, all of the capture changes in each phase, build or extend, will be included in a single layer, one for run, one for build. It's produced as output from the stack pack, but in the build case, those those changes are just permeated through to the next to the next phase until we add that item potency constraint, right? Um, so all the capture changes in each phase, or uh, it, uh, all the, the capture changes in the build phase. Sorry, go ahead. I feel like the current wording is okay because in other cases we describe build layers, even though we're not 
generating tar balls from them. For Regardless of whether they're exported or not, is what you're saying, right? We call them layers whether they're exported or not. It's still a layer, but it's not really persistent. It's a file system diff. <laughs> I mean, we're really just talking about changes to the file system that you're making in a mm -hmm. running container that then go away completely later. There's no tarring them up. There's no doing anything to indicate that they're any type of layer. I guess the reason that feels OK to me is because if a regular build pack makes a build true cache false launch false layer that is not created any differently than this would be. Uh, it's in a layers directory. It's a separate dedicated directory that we call a layer, has a layer toml file next to it. Um, you know, yeah. I think in that context, you wouldn't argue that it's an OCI image layer. Could we just be really explicit here instead? Yeah, I think we should just cut any mention of build. Okay. I'll work all the capture changes in the run phase will be included in a single layer produced as the output of the during the extend phase, right? During the extend phase, the snapshot will be stored in the run layers directory. Um, do we need, even in the case that we're running these in parallel, if we put it in the layers directory in one image, we need to copy it across anyways. Could we just call that exported layer something else in the layers directory instead of having two different names for the layers directory? That was something I didn't understand from last time. I was thinking if they run in parallel in a, in a platform, you you probably can't have multiple writers, right? Yeah. Like, so I, I think it makes sense to be different directories and then the exporter would know about both of them. I think by the time it reaches the exporter, they have to have different names, but it can still be layers from the perspective of the two containers, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, Extend doesn't have to know that it's a different directory. Uh, so in the export image, we want to differentiate the run layer from potentially in the future the build layer. But is there a reason we need a separate top level slash run layers directory? In the export image? Yes. Yes, because the build container and the export container, extend container are running at the same time. And they're each getting a volume. And then both of those volumes need to be mounted into export. So they need different paths. Volumes. Got it. So it's not right. OK. Uh, can we be more explicit about that? Which will be um, mounted into the run layers directory of the uh, export container. Uh, say it again, mounted into the? Uh, into the run layers directory, so delete in the next. Oh, I see. Uh, of the export container. Emily, does that cover your? OK, good. Uh, and then a separate sentence afterwards. Um, any changes, any changes performed by the stack build pack to the um, build image uh, will persist through build packs executing on that image, um, but not be captured in a layer. But to say non-excluded changes for both of these, or can we just leave that as a caveat later? Leave it as a caveat later, I think. <laughs> They're not captured changes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the layer stir may not be used to execute to create arbitrary layers. Everybody agree with that? Does that need to be layers and run layers? <laughs> now that we're oh. feeding run layers around, it gets a little confusing anytime we mention layers. Um, run layers isn't a directory that's accessible to the build pack. Um, so yeah, I think well, it's just an yeah. implementation detail of the exporter that we're calling out in the RFC because it clarifies something that might be confusing to people. Um, I can do this abstract layers dir thing. Perfect. Uh, a stack can provide stack packs by including them in the build packs directory uh, and by providing an order. Yep, to define an order of execution. Yep, we agree with this and we agree with how it's overwritten in the builder phase. Good. So next, next sentence after the blurb. A stack pack will only execute if it passes detection. When a stack pack is executed, it's detect and build scripts use the same parameters as a regular build pack. Everybody agree with that? I'm at read to mix ends right now to save some time. And then give me a thumbs up if you're good.
I have one. <clears throat> Sorry. We're we not ready to talk about it yet. Thumbs ups. Are we all good? Cool. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, we say excluded paths are recovered when the image is exported. Do we mean restored? I mean, that was my assumption, but I'll let Joe answer that. Thanks, Early. Yeah. Not when the image is restored. When the cache is during restored. The next, during the next restore phase. How about before the build phase? Before the next build phase? Or build or extend phase. <laughs> or rebase. Right. Build, build and extend are both phases within rebase now. Build and extend are both phases within rebase. Or extend is a phase Sounds within like rebase. Extend, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Oh, OK. I was like, OK. <laughs> Hurts my brain. Got to got to keep pushing through it. Uh, exported, exported for build time build. Uh, a given path is excluded at user space build pack build time. And recovered the next time the build image is extended with the build pack. So, uh, exported for build time build is you can chop off some layers in the build image and mark these as hey, these don't end up being seen by the build packs. And that chunk can get restored next time the stack pack runs. Does that seem right to everybody? And then, same thing for the run image chop it off, doesn't end up in the app image, but it can be restored during the next extend phase, not seen by the build packs. Good. And everybody's interpretation of that is correct. And then rebase run is the same thing as build time run. And the reason we need rebase run is because it's kind of redo and extend, and you need to have that updated cache or something. Exactly. And like the var cache tree. Okay. For what it's worth, just as feedback, like this little area here is super confusing for me. And I don't know if there's anything that we could do to basically make it better, but not that I would not approve if that matters. Uh, Javier, can you propose um, on this after we commit it, can you propose clarifications now that you understand what it means? Um, and since I think you have, a, you have a sense for how you're confused or what you think is confusing about it, if that makes sense, um, can you uh, propose that as a change? Awesome. Um, for example, uh, this, sorry, uh, this last part here, um, with our cache as an example, it says we might want to mark it cached, have it restored during the build time, during build time and rebase. Does that mean, should it be export? If you want to exclude it from the final app image, is that export time right? during the export phase really is what you mean there to clarify? Because build time suggests during the build phase, but you're not talking about excluding it from the build packs in the, sun, in the first fragment of the sentence. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sh I'm following what you're saying. It's this part that is. Yeah, because I think if you're saying that var cache is going to be excluded from the app image, that doesn't have to do with during the build phase, excluding it from the build packs being able to see it. So saying during build time suggests the build phase, which might confuse somebody who's reading it. And you're saying it should be export. It should be just, I would say, have it restored during the export phase. Um, period. No, no and rebase because export phase it, happens during rebase too. Cool. Um, moving on to mix ends. Oh, wait, that means it's so much more confusing. May want to market it as cached to have it not restored, to have it cached, right? That's the opposite of restored. <laughs> Does that seem right, Emily? Mm. But it's not export. Ex export would you export the cache? Eh, okay, maybe not. To have it restored during the export phase, right? So that that, that phrase doesn't make any sense to me. You never restore, restore any export phase. Sorry, not the export phase. It was supposed to be the um, phase? extend phase. That's okay, I was, I was I was waiting for you to resolve it because I was I super see. confused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Restored before the extend phase. It is actually during the extend phase. Yeah, it is. But it's OK. It, it's a technicality. It depends what you define extend phase as. Yeah. And I, I, well, it needs I to define be... it to include everything that the extend phase It's it restored by the restorer and then untarred. I think it needs to be, I think now, like a rebase operation with stack packs. How I'm thinking about it 
now using some of the language you guys have mentioned. I think now a rebase has three phases. It has restore, extend, and rebase. Right, because you need to like mm -hmm. take the restore has to take the things out of the cache and put them in the layers directory. Extend applies them, runs the stack packs, and then does its thing, and then rebase exports it. So I think we can call it extend in both of those, or we can use restore or extend. Yeah. So okay as is, or restored before the extend phase. I think we're good. Okay. Restored. I was going to say before. Sorry. I'm OK either way. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. <laughs> Wherever you want, Emily. Wherever you want. OK, moving on. Whatever it says. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. As Terrence points out, we have 10 minutes left. We should we should get a move on it. Um, a, a lot of these are templates down, so I'm hoping we can get quite a bit further yeah, than true. we got in the first. Um, a stack pack may define a set of mixins that provide statically and build pack toml. Everybody agree on this format? Stack pack has a stacks list. You can currently specify mixins in the stacks list that are required by the stack pack. Or is that is that correct? Stack pack may require mixins statically as well from other stack packs that come before it. I don't love the mix match between plural and singular here, but I wish it was one all the way through, like mix in, like, but I wouldn't I won't block on it. Got it. Is everybody okay with these two sections? Again, in stacks, there are two lists of mixins. One's things you provide, one's things you require. All build packs, stack packs or not, can require mixins. Uh, only stack packs can provide mixins. Uh, you can only use the star in the mixins list on the provide side. Cool. User space build packs can use the build plan like that to require mixins from stack packs, all good. User space build packs may not provide mixins. Cool. Um, Is it worth moving just a knit like 121 when we talk about providing mixins to just move that up to that section? I actually had it, I just recently moved it down here. I can just, it's kind of cross cuts both. Yeah, I think I moved it yeah. twice myself at some point. Okay. Never which mind. the question is which action are you describing or which file are you describing right yeah good to move on uh resolving mixins after the type phase life cycle merge the list of provided mixins from the following sources stack run stack build pack yeah this is where we have some questions probably this is the newest stuff i think stack and run stack i feel These like don't exist as concepts yet really i mean stack does but I think everything should be in one stack tumble file. I don't think we need a second run stack tumble because stack tumble already has references to run images. I think it's totally fine for it to have references to run image mixins. Does that mean you can't have a dynamic sort of target run image for a single builder? That is correct. Not sure I understand. This is the file that. When does stack toml? When do these files get generated? Stack toml stack and creation. Run. So stack just... toml gets generated when you create a builder, right now, and it contains references to run images. Um, so I think you could either say that the mixins on those don't change, and you can end up having them as strings in stack toml. The other way to do it, which I think I prefer, is that right? Is that we would need to, well, there's a phase ordering problem here, but you'd want to get the mixins from the run image. But we don't know what the run image is yet when we run detect, sort of a problem. 
can we take the mix in lists as input into those life cycle phases and defer the decision for how we store them? Because it seems like there's maybe a decision about should there be mix ins on the, the should the run mix ins be allowed to be in the build image statically? I think no, but other people might disagree with me. Um, should we just say, should we kind of defer, not specify how? Mix ins or where the mix ins come from, and say after the detect phase, the lifecycle will emerge list to provide mix ins for the following sources. Uh, I think labeled. it's going to be a problem because the first thing we're going to want to like, we're going to need this to implement it, right? Like, we can't, it's not something we can, not an extra feature we could punt till later. It's sort of core. I think you could punt the run stack, but not the stack. Like, I think I think it's okay to default to the stack toml if there is one present, but I think you should be able to override it as well. Because I, you know, when you're on a builder, you probably already have the mix ins, but for the run stack, I think that being a, a flag into the lifecycle makes a lot of sense for the platform to be able to determine the run target potentially. It means the platform is going to have to read the config blob of the run image. It can't just pass through a reference, right? To do a build and then generate a file. Yeah, and it doesn't, yeah. It's gonna to have to generate some file or pass them in, I guess, or in the long list somewhere. And that's easy enough for a pack. It starts getting hard for other platforms, but. Other platforms make a helper. <laughs> you know, you have to pass the images you're gonna to run to the helper. It reads those and passes those to subsequent stages. Just saying, can we, can we get rid of these file references and just say, we'll figure it out in the implementation and the spec later, right? So RFC say from the following sources and in the first one, the um, uh, build stack image mix in list and the second one run stack image mix in list. Are we okay with that? Okay, we agree that unmatched requires and provides cause the build to fail, right? If a stack pack provides mix in is not required, stack build pack may pass detection. Everybody, if you could read up to the caching and restoring section. And we'll probably have to call it for today. I'm, I feel like there's a distinction in here that doesn't make sense now that you can't dynamically provide mixins anymore. Like if a stack build pack provides a mixin that is not required, it may pass detection. Does that make sense? Because you could have uh, stack packs that statically say they're going to provide something and then no build pack could require them dynamically in user space. It's a fail detection then, right? No one needs it. No, no, no. That's okay, oh, though. Well. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's an optional build pack that opts out of detection at that point, right? You don't want to run that build pack. What if you're a stack pack and you say, I can provide 37 different kinds of versions of OpenSSL, and then one of the build packs says, I'll take this one. Oh, that's what you mean. We have to, someone has to require at least one of them, though, right? I don't know. Do they? Is that a requirement? I don't want to run the stack pack every time for no reason. Someone needs to require something. Oh, you could have a stack pack that doesn't do anything with mixins, right? It could just be a stack pack that passes detection and always runs. Or is this- In that case, it doesn't, 
makes sense. In that case, it doesn't provide any either, though. Yeah. Right. How about if it if it provides and none are required? I don't know. I say you could have an empty build plan for that build pack, and then you just don't run build, but you do run. I don't know. That think, still feels weird. With I think it's sorry. No good. I think it's at least one has to pass, right? Because there's no reason for it to execute if none of them pass, but if one of them passes, it goes through. Joe, does that meet your requirement? I think this still gets a little weird. Like, let's take an example of like a uh, libpq right here. And if it could provide for both build and run, but it yeah. but something only requires yeah. it for run, you're still going to get executed with the word for the build phase, right? Um, but it just wouldn't have any build plan entries for you. At least one thing. Like for the entries. next. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Stephen. Uh, sorry, maybe I'm wrong. I was just going to say, at least in order, it passes differently for the different phases, right? So at least one for each phase, at least one mixin has to pass for each phase in order for that phase to pass and happen. Is that the understanding? I think that's how I'd want it to work, but it does make build pack author a bit confusing because if you kind of expect to always run and build, like, even though they're only choosing to extend and run, like, could you depend on something that you expected to do and build that's not there? I guess not, but it is more confusing than normal build packs with the double phase here. I agree. Do we want to change that model? I think this is the conclusion I would draw from what we've talked about so far. I think it's confusing, but I don't know if there's a better way to do it if we want to have both the build and run stuff, and plus the fact that uh, you can provide like an asterisk, right, for either mm -hmm. of them. I think that's just the matter of the constraints of the problem, at least yeah. when Jesse and I were looking at that one time. If you do an asterisk, that means in order to pass something ha for each of the phases, there has to be at least one mix in that would get installed by that build pack for that, in that phase, for that phase to pass, right? So I, I agree, it's confusing, but it, it does work or like it. It's a consistent model for there. Um, so how about uh, Joe, if you wanna touch this up to meet, do you understand what would- Yeah, I think there's, I'm gonna split this out into cases, like more than, more than mixins are provided and none are required. Mixins are not provided. The pass, and then mixins are require uh, provided, but not all are required. And we're saying may pass, pass. Take that first one. Pass. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. And the first one to skip now, right? I know yeah. we use that terminology somewhere. Yeah. These are may pass, but yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's, you've already passed at this point, right? Or well, no, never mind. You could fail with a phase status. That's why it's a may pass, right? Um, per, this is per phase. All these things, the three three things are per phase, right? Sorry, Emily, go ahead. If mixins are not provided. It, I feel like all of these are may pass, right? Like I don't, but it's not going to, because you could always provide something else, right? Provide and require something else. It's just about whether it alone is sufficient for a pass. Well, if, if a number of mixins are provided and none of them are required by anybody, it definitely fails in all cases, right? What if you're providing something else too? Or is that not? So I don't think out. we have to say that passes. Oh, I see. Because stack packs can require regular build plan entries. Oh, yeah. Like, what if you provide CA cert and you provide a, some mix in for installing them? Yeah. I feel like Shit. if. Yeah. Or other things. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, kind of complicated. <laughs> okay. 
but I think there's just, there's still a consistent model here. It's like mm -hmm. at least something has to be provided for it to execute for that phase, right? Mix in or not. Um, I think we, we agree on the underlying thing. So we are five minutes over and I'm late to think. Um, how about if folks here want to stay and touch this up to meet that requirement, they can, and then we'll pick back up on line 150. Uh, next time we can schedule either something. Do we want to schedule something out of band of, of working groups or do we want to use the next working group for this? I'm happy to do both. I feel like we have a ways to go on this doc, so. Who, who wants to own scheduling something out of band to go through stack packs? Good. Okay, awesome. So um, get this touched up, schedule something out of band. We'll try to get it and then maybe we target one of the working group meetings next week to present and say, hey, we are ready for a vote on this. Please vote soon uh, if we can. How far do we get? Do we get at least halfway? I think we're more than halfway. To your point, it's like there's a lot of these, a lot the of examples are examples. really long. Yeah. yeah good. And then the this stuff is kind of boilerplate. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm move my section. Again, I'll try to I'm gonna try and uh, commit up to here. I'll reword this and commit up to here. Awesome. Um, again, apologize for being uh, very <laughs> forceful with the uh, changes. I just um, I think we're all all, all in consensus. So we want to get. I can't consensus. seem to be heard. And don't That's apologize. Right. <laughs> just did it. I'd rather hear it now than implementation. We'll see. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I really like this.